Hi, my name is Al Nystrom with the Lincoln Electric Company. I'm here to talk to you about the Vantage 400. First thing we'll do is come down here to the front. Vantage 400 has a 32.7 horsepower Perkins engine that you start up right here. You run stop switch, hit your glow plug, start button, should fire right up. This is your automatic idle right here. Our generator produces 11 kilowatts of single phase power out of these two 120 receptacles. This is 240 and 17 kilowatts, three phase power out of here with a 50 amp breaker. These are your welding controls, mode switch, you have TIG, stick, pipe, gouging, and CV. So right here, this is your control for your output, our control. Weld terminal switch right here, either has the weld terminals on and always hot, or remotely controlled. This is a wire feeder voltmeter switch. Here are your output studs. First thing I'd like to talk about is safety real quick. If I was actually working on this machine and had it running, I'd be wearing my safety glasses, some electrical safety gloves, long sleeves so we don't get cut up, and I would take care around any electrically live parts. Now, first problem we're going to discuss is if this machine runs but has no output. Our output's generated right here in the generator, and we're flashed with 12 volts to start up this rotor. There are two brushes and two slip rings. We need to make sure those slip rings are nice and clean and the brushes are making good connection. We can clean those slip rings up with some 500 grit emery cloth and that, a lot of times that'll bring it right up. If that doesn't work, first thing I would check is the resistance on the rotor. Go ahead, take our meter, put it on ohms, get in there. Should be about 25, 26 ohms. If that reads good, we need to make sure we're getting voltage down to the rotor. We use the battery voltage to flash this and start it up. So put on DC volts, machine off, probe in on the 200 lead on the idle board, put your other probe on ground, and then go ahead and start it up and see if we're getting 12 volts DC. If we see that, that is our flashing voltage and that means the board's good and we need to make sure it comes down to the bridge, by the capacitor, and then to the rotor. If that all looks good, next thing we'll need to check is this bridge. But before we do that, I'd like to talk a little bit more about how this field builds up. We take the 12 volts that went into the rotor and it comes out of the stator on the 115 winding. We use that 115 winding and run it over this bridge, rectify it to DC, filter it on this capacitor, and push it back into the rotor. That's why we need to come up here to this bridge, but also we need to make sure that our grounds coming from the stator are good. You have your neutral here and your main ground over here. Those ground connections are good. We're gonna take this bridge, pull these leads off, and check it with our diode check on our meter. Should have voltage flowing one way. Switch your probes and nothing the other way. If any of those diodes are shorted or blown, we won't build up. If that all checks out good, we can hook it back up and check our capacitor. If all that looks good, then we know that our generators make an AC power. If we still have an issue with our 120 and our 240, we're going to need to check it right here at this three-phase breaker. The generator makes three-phase AC power, 240 volts phase-to-phase, -phase, and it all feeds at the top of this breaker. Should be able to go phase to phase across all three phases and see 240 volts AC. If you have that there, then we need to go from the bottom of this breaker on to see where we're losing it on its way to, its th to the receptacles. Next I'd like to move on to the welding circuitry in this machine. 
First thing, easiest way to check our weld output, right here across the output studs. In stick mode, we should have 58, 59 volts DC. The way that comes in is off the generator as three phase AC power to the bottom of this rectifier. Should be 65 volts AC when we go phase to phase. That is then rectified, comes out here as 90 volts DC, plus or minus 10. If this chopper board's powered up, you'll see a green LED near the bottom. That same power is then taken from the 13 and 14 leads and run into this plug at the control board for control board power. We can easily check that right here. If voltage is present there, then the control board should be powering up. We'll know this because our meters will be on and we should have idle control. If the control board's powered up, but we still don't have any weld output, next place we'll need to look is at the weld terminal switch. What this does is it puts a short across two leads to either turn the weld terminals on or disconnects it for them to be remotely controlled. We can easily check that at the back of the switch and check for continuity across it when it's closed or in the weld terminal's on position. Also, that short needs to be good at two and four back at the board. If we have a good short at the board, next thing we need to check is our gate signal coming on these two twisted leads, 23 and 25. Should be a 20 kilohertz signal coming out there. And then that is what tells the chopper board to fire. If we are getting that signal, you should see two or three more lights light up on the chopper board. Now, if we're making our output, but we have issues with our control, there are a few things we can check. First thing would be right here. These are our leads from our shunt, which is the feedback device that's bolted up behind the positive output stud. If we lose this connection, we'll have no feedback to the control board, and we'll have full output with no control. So we need to make sure these connections are good. If our control just seems off, if it's high or low, something along those lines, we need to check the feedback on that shunt. What we can do is put it on a load bank, turn the load bank up to 400 amps, make sure we're getting a good 400 amp load. We can take a millivolt reading across these two leads. At 400 amps, you should see 50 millivolts. Another problem you could have would be with your controls. That's your control power right there. Plugs into here. It's a 10,000 ohm pot. So we need to check that, make sure it has good resistance and a good sweep all the way through. Another thing on this machine are these remotes. They are auto sensing remotes. So if anything gets up in there and makes the board think that there's a remote plugged in, it could alter our control. An easy test to get around that is to just pull this plug out entirely. You'll need to put a jumper in pins three and four where the two and four leads are to enable our output. And you should have full control up to 250 amps. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the engine. The engine is powered with this switch, which applies 12 volts up to this board right here. Before we can fire our fuel solenoid and get this engine running, we need to make sure that 12 volts gets up to that board. We can check that right here. Go from there to ground. Should see 12 volts with the switch in the run position. Once we power up our shutdown board, we can send 12 volts over to the shutdown solenoid right here. That controls our fuel. 
With this solenoid energized, we allowed fuel flow into the engine. Without this energized, this engine won't run. The other solenoid here is our idle solenoid. This has two coils, a pull and a hold, controlled by that board on these two wires. Another problem we can have with the engine is that it's shutting down after 30 or 60 seconds. One of the reasons could be this guy right here. This is our oil pressure switch. This switch will close on low oil pressure, ground out these leads, and shut the engine down. A quick test to see if this is working is to pull the leads off of the WK terminal right here and let it run, see if it shuts down. If it does, then it's something else. If not, then it's our oil pressure switch. One other thing that could shut this engine down is our temperature switch. This guy right here. We do the same thing with the oil pressure switch. Pull off this lead, 235, start up the engine, let it run, see if it shuts down. If not, we have a bad switch. That wraps up our basic troubleshooting here for the Vantage 400 with the Perkins engine. If you have any other issues, go to lincolnelectric.com or call us at 888-935-3877. Thank you very much.